Today's year begins at the Mishnah that you find at the very top of the Yud Aleph. Mozgu loy es hakois v'omar hareni nozir mimenu. A cup of wine was filled up in front of so and so, and he said, "I am a nozir from it." Hare ze nozir. Well, with that, he becomes a full-fledged nozir. Thirty days of nozir observance. Maise be'isho achas shohoiso shikira was a, an incident, a story involving a woman that had become uh, inebriated. Umozgu lo esakois, and they filled up a cup of wine. The Omra, and she said in her drunken state, Hareni nazira mimenu. Very similar to the opening phrase of the Mishnah, where he declared, I am a nazir mimenu. Omru chachomim, and the chachomim ruled, Lo niskav nazu elo loimar, harei hu alai korban. The Chachum said that she did not have any intention to accept formal Nazirus. All her intention was was that that cup would be forbidden to her. Now, this is a situation we find throughout the Shas. We have a, an opening law taught in the Mishnah that by saying, Hareini Nozir Mimenu, here he becomes a full-fledged Nozir. And then a story is brought, and you would, you would assume that the story is brought to illustrate the opening halacha. And, in fact, throughout the Shas, when maisim are brought, that is their purpose, to, to support, to strengthen whatever halacha preceded them. But in this case, as happens from time to time, we have a story that actually contradicts the opening law. In this story, we saw her say, Hareini Nazira Mimenu, and she did not become a full-fledged Nazira. And that's the Gemara's opening question. Maisa Listar. Do you quote a Maisa to contradict? That's out of character. Amris Reisha Harei Zenozir. You ruled in the Reisha that when he said Hareini Nazir Mimenu, he becomes a Nazir, and he's uh, he's also for 30 days in drinking any wine. Fahadar Tani, and then you teach a story, Maisa Bishahas, a story involving a woman, and in that story, she did not become a full-fledged Nazir for 30 days. Alma, Baha'i, Hu, De Asir, Ha'yeno, Achrino, Shari. From the story involving that woman, all you see is that, that one cup that was in front of her, she became forbidden, but not forbidden in drinking other wine. So structurally, what do we do with a Mishnah like this? The Gemara answers, note that we have a long answer marking. Chisure Machasra Vahachi Kotani. The Mishnah is taught in an abbreviated fashion. And the correct understanding of it is as follows. Mozgu lo esakois v'omar hareni nozir mimenu. A cup of wine was filled up in front of an individual and he said, I am a nozir from it. Harei ze nozir. Through that he becomes a full-fledged nozir. V'im shikorhu. And here's the new information that we didn't see in the Mishnah. And that is in that if the person spoken of was in fact drunk, the Omar Hareini Nozir Mimenu, and in his drunken state, he says, I'm, an, I'm a Nozir from it, Eino Nozir. He does not become a Nozir. And then the Mishnah continues with the story of exactly that kind of case. My Taima, why is it that he doesn't become a Nozir? Keman Omar, because in saying while drunk, Hareini Nozir Mimenu, it's Keman Omar, it's as if he said, Hare Olai Korbanhu. It, this cup of wine is upon me like a sacrifice, namely just like a sacrifice, an item that's sanctified you cannot benefit from, so too, this particular cup I have forbidden upon myself. Fechitema Leimahachi. Well, if that's the guy's intention, so shouldn't he just say that? Namely, Hare Olai Korban. Why? does this guy in the Mishnah that who's uh, inebriated and he says Hareini Nazira Mimenu and you're explaining that his intention is simply to forbid upon himself one cup. Why doesn't he say then Hareolai Korban? Answer. Sovar he figures Maisin Li Achrino Umitsaron Li. The Mephorshim point out that it's the way of society to we'll say Take advantage of the drunken man. People like to see a person who's drunk drink more and more and more. And he doesn't want that pressure. So he figures that if he would say 
that this cup, this particular cup, is forbidden upon me, that won't stop the, those around him from trying to get him to drink other cups. Therefore, Amo Lahu Ho Milsa, the Psika Lahu, I will therefore say something that is very final, very definitive. There, namely, the term he used was nausier, and that will convince them that I'm serious, that I don't want to be bothered anymore. Umaisenami bishachas, and in fact, a story like that uh, took place with the woman in the Mishnah. Let's go uh, glance at Tosis just to see uh, that what uh, we said. You can find in his commentary four lines from the top. Vim shikohu. It's the way of people to pressure a drunken man, drink more, more, more. This guy who is, in fact, a bit intoxicated, he doesn't want to drink anymore. And he says, I'm a nozir. The salkum male of to, to um, distance and remove those people from upon him. Shim lo yomar nozirhu. If he doesn't say that, that we'll say that extreme language. Yore, he's fearful. She of you lo koisachir. They'll bring him another cup. Lekachomer nozir lesagam legamri meolov. And and that's why he said nozir. Avol kishein o shikor ain't there a zero. If a person is not drunk, this is not the case. It's not the way of people to pressure a totally sober individual to drink more and more. Therefore, in, when the case of, in the case of a sober individual who says, Hareini Nazir Menu, he's really accepting upon himself real Naziris. It's not just a mere attempt to push people away from him. Ulakach Omer de Nazir Mikulhu, and because of the case of the uh, drunken state, he said, I'm a Nazir from all wine, when, as we said, that really wasn't his in, true intention. Umaisinami Bisha Achas, that was drunk, and we saw that the Chomim pointed out, well, Ruth, she's not a real Nazira. She was simply trying to get people away from her uh, while she was drunk. The Mishnah. Hareini Nazir, Almanas, Shehe, Shoise, Yayin, Umetame, Lemesim. Hareze Nazir Vyosir Bekulan. Person accepts himself upon himself Nazirus in a very strange way. He says, I'll be a Nazir on condition that I will be able to drink wine and that I will be able to defile myself to the dead. Two very stark violations of formal Nazirus. We should point out that he is let's say, denying the wine prohibition and the and defilement to the dead, but he is agreeing to other aspects of the zeros. Let's say, for example, he's accepting the prohibition of cutting one's hair. So, someone like this, the, the Mishnah rules, in fact, becomes a Nazir, and he is banned or pro- prohibited in all uh, nausea related activities. In other words, he cannot drink wine, he cannot defile himself to the mace, to the dead, as well as not to take a haircut. Another case. Yodeani shiesh nazirus, avol eni yodea shanozir osir biayin. He says, I, I know there's such a thing as nazirus, but I, I don't know that a nausea is forbidden in wine. Hare ze osir. He becomes a Nazir and is forbidden in all Nazir activities. The Rebbe Shimon Matir. Rebbe Shimon says he doesn't become a Nazir. This is a function of Rebbe Shimon's uh, opinion that one does not become a Nazir unless he uh, stipulates each uh, item of Nazirus. With regard to Shittas Rebbe Shimon, and we've seen this in the past, either you say, Hareini Nozir, I am a Nozir in an unqualified fashion, but once you say that I'm a Nozir uh, from one aspect of Nazirus, that is not enough to bind you until you enumerate each one of the points. So in this case, he's, um, he's not enumerating the wine prohibition, so he doesn't become a Nozir, because once again, according to Rebbe Shimon, once you start enumerating the details of Nazirus, you have to name or enumerate each one. Another case. Yodeani shanozir osir 
I know that a nazir is forbidden in wine, says the individual, Avol, Sovur Hoyisi, but I thought, Shechachomem Matirinli, that the Chomem would certainly uh, release me. Mitnei, She'ein Aniyocho Lichyos Elo They would certainly release me from the uh, wine restriction because they know that I cannot live without wine. Oh, but Neshani Koiver Esamesim, or that I am a grave digger, I bury the dead. So, uh, a person who acknowledges there is Nazirus but is assuming that he would be released from the Nazirus because of uh, these considerations, uh, so he does not become a Nazir. Rabbi Shimon Oser. Let's take a look at Rashi. V'im uh, Omar, Yodea Ani Shenozir Oser Bian Abel Sovr Hoyisi Kishihizarti, when I accepted the Nazirus, Min Hayayin, Shiu Chachoma Matirinli, Mitnei She'eni Yocho Lichyoiz Belo Yayin. So that I thought that when I accepted the Nazirus, the Chachomim would release me from it because I can't live without wine. Oi, Rashi goes on, Yodea Ani Shea Nozir Oser Likbor Mesim. I know that a Nozir is forbidden to bury the dead, Ukshibalti Olai Nazirus, and when I accept the Nazirus, Sofor Hayisi, Shiu Chachoma Matirinli, that the Chachomim would release me from the Nazirus, Mitnei She'u Mnasi Likbor Mesim, because that's my profession, burial of the dead. Harei ze muter. So the Tanakama ruled he is not a nazir. The gloi milsa lemafreya. It becomes retroactively clear to us. The mikor lo kabel ole nazirus miyayin to masmesim velo kibel olav elochatzi nazirus. That this guy initially accepted upon himself only partial nazirus. The ruling of this Mishnah, particularly when you see Rabbi Shimon says he's bound, is a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, problematic. Because here you have someone that is accepting partial Nazirus. And in the section just before this, Rib Shimon says that partial acceptance is not enough. And here, partial, and, and partial acceptance is not enough to bind you. And therefore, you're not a Nazir. And here you have an example of partial acceptance. And Reb Shimon says he is bound to the Nazirus. Osir means he's bound to being a Nazir. This will have to be explained later in the Gemara. Once again, uh, we're going to open the Gemara, focusing on uh, Shittas Rib Shimon. Before we go into the Gemara text, though, let's glance at the side where we have a, you know, say, a topic heading, where we've written, Machlikis Rib Yeshua ben Levi v'Ravina, b'mai Shittas Rib Shimon, we're going to have a, ten, an Am- Amoraic controversy concerning what is the opinion of Rib Shimon, b'ha'oimer ha'reini nozir al-manas she'ei shoy se'yayin. He says, I will be a Nazir on condition that I can drink wine. The Rav Shub and Levi have a Kabbalah b'miktsas. Uh, as far as he is concerned, it's a partial acceptance of Nazirus. V'lochein lohavi Nazir. Therefore, he does not become a Nazir. The Ravina have a Masta Mashikos Torah. According to Ravina, you have a fellow making conditions uh, that contradict the Torah. In other words, the Torah this says that a Nazir is prohibited in drinking wine. And here he's accepting Nazirus on condition that he can drink wine. And one who is Masne, Masne from Loshon Tnai, one who makes a condition contrary to that which is written in the Torah, the Tano Botel, his Tanai, his condition is void. For Lochein, have a Nazir. The condition is simply disregarded. And therefore he is a Nazir. Having presented the Shittas, now let's take a look in the Gemara itself. The Gemara asks, uh, just like Rabbi Shimon uh, disagrees in the succeeding sections of the Mishnah, uh, where a person said, Yodea Anishiyesh Nazirus. We saw in section, example 2 of the Mishnah. A guy says, I know there's Nazirus, but I don't know that a Nazir is also in wine. And uh, Reb Shimon said there that the Nazirus doesn't get off the ground because he wasn't macabre all the details of Nazirus. What about in the beginning of the Mishnah? The first case of the Mishnah. He said, I'll be a Nazir on condition that I can drink wine. Or uh, and, uh, that I can uh, defile to the dead. There's also a, uh, we'll say a, a partial acceptance of Nazirus. We mentioned, in the, when we learned the Mishnah, we mentioned he's accepting the haircut prohibition. So you have partial acceptance of Nazirus there. Why don't we see Rabbi Shimon ruling in section 1 of the Mishnah? Rabbi, it should say Rabbi Shimon Matir there as well. If in section 2, 
as a result of, we'll say, partial Nazir acceptance, Rabbi Shimon says that is not enough to bind him. Similarly, he should have ruled in section 1. The Gemara asks, nami Rabbi Shimon Beresha. Should not Rabbi Shimon have also expressed his dissenting opinion in case 1 at the beginning of the Mishnah? Oma Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Choluk Hoya Rabbi Shimon, Av Beresha. In fact, Rabbi Shimon does disagree with regard to the Resha as well. And when Rabbi Shimon rules in the Mishnah, he says, Rabbi Shimon Matir, his heter, as a result of not accepting all the details of the Nazirus, extends to case one as well. Ravina Omar, and note we have a long marking. Ravina takes four lines to develop. Ravina Omar, Beresha lo polig Rabbi Shimon. In the Resha, Rabbi Shimon does not disagree. He agrees, he's maskim, he agrees that the fellow will be a nazir. What happened in the Resha? He said, Hareini nazir al menas, on condition, sheishay seyayin, etc. My taima, why will Rabbi Shimon agree the fellow is a nazir in the Resha? Misha davile, because that guy is masne al mashikos of the Torah. He is making a condition against that which the Torah dictates. And he who makes conditions contrary to the dictates of the Torah, Tano Botel. His condition is void. And you remain with the basic vow of namely of Hareini Nazir. The Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi Omar Loch. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi responds to that interpretation and he says, Hi Almanas. This fellow who said Almanas, Kechutz Domi. It's like saying Chutz. Chutz means except for. Now, in order to appreciate this a little further, we're going to go through Rashi. Uh, first, we're going to start with Rashi, Dibur Amasil Ravina. Ravina Omar, the last of the narrow lines. Ravina Omar, Bereisha Vaday Lo Polig Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon, according to Ravina, would not uh, express heter uh, permission in the Reish. Would agree that the fellow becomes a nazir. Dilu Hasam Kivel Omar Hareini Nazir. In that case, he said, "I will be a nazir." Kivel Olav Kol Teras Nazir. At that point, that he says Hareini Nazir, he's accepting all the details of Nazirus. Vahai Do Omar Al Menas, and the continuation of his statement, namely. Al menas on condition that havile kemasa mashgosu b'torah. It's like one who makes conditions against the Torah. The aim to know klum. His condition is void. The havile nazir gomor, and he is therefore a full fledged nazir. The havile kemishomar. It's tantamount to someone who's getting married, and in marriage there are Torah expectations of a man's obligation to his wife. And he says, He says, I'm marrying you on condition that you have no claims of share, uh, of uh, food sustenance, clothing provision, and own and conjugal relations. Anyone who gets married stating conditions like that, His condition is starkly against the Torah's expectations of a man to provide those things to a wife. And therefore, his condition falls by the wayside and he is obligated to provide her with all those things even though he made his marriage conditional that he wouldn't for the Rashi continues Rabbi Shimon Levi Omaloch Rabbi Poleg Rabbi Shimon will dissent in the Reisha as well and Matir the high Almanas the statement of I'm accepting the Zerus Almanas Sheshesian Tam Lemesim Kechutz Domi it's like saying, I'll be a Nazir except for Kevon Shikiba, the Kiba of Nazirus Bemixas, since his acceptance of Nazirus is only a partial acceptance, Lo have a Masna Amashikos of the Torah. He's not making a condition that is a direct, total contradiction to the Torah. Dilu Lugabi Mandomar Amanas, Shem Lo Chalai, Lo Sher, Lo Xus, Lo Yaino, Lo Kiba of Klum. A man, like we saw in the, in the, in the example Rashi mentioned before that he's not going to uh, provide his wife with any of the husband ex- uh, obligations, he didn't accept any 
obligations. Therefore, the uh, stipulation falls by the wayside. Avalocha, kibilov, bemixas. But in our case, in the Mishnah case, he accepted something, for example, the Isur of the haircut. Therefore, since he's not a total contradiction of the Torah, his Tanai is not, we don't say his Tanai is void, it, it exists. Now, the Eino Nazir, why would Rav Shimon say he's not a Nazir? The Fishain Dvorov Harishonim Klum. His Kabbalah the Mixas, his partial acceptance, is not sufficient. Because of Rabbi Shimon's opinion that you don't become a Nazir until you enumerate all of the Nazira's details. So, as far as this Machlokis is concerned, Ravina views a person who says, Almanas, She Shoisi Antam and Mason, as a Masa Mashkos of the Torah, and the Tanai is thereby void, and therefore he is a Nazir. And Rabbi Shua ben Levi says, it's not a case of Masa Mashkos of Torah. It's, in effect, partial acceptance of Nazirus, and that is not sufficient for Rabbi Shimon for a person to become a Nazir. Tanyo Kavose de Ravina. We have a Tanaic source supporting Ravina that holds even, let's say, a partial uh, denial in, uh, in conditional terms is considered masne alma shikosuf batora. Omar, the source says, Omar hareni nozir amenas she she seyayin u'metamalamesim. The very case we saw in the Rasha of our Mishnah. So we want to just add, like we added before, he says, I'll be a Nazir on condition that I can drink wine and, and defile to the dead. He, however, does agree to accept the haircut prohibition. Hare ze Nazir. He becomes bound to the Nazirus. We also Bekulan, and he is prohibited in all the Nazir prohibitions. Because he is considered making a condition against the Torah. Even though it's not a total contradiction to the Torah, it's enough that there's some of some element of Torah contradiction making his tonight his condition against the Torah. And anyone who makes conditions against that which is stated by the Torah, to know Batel. His Tanai, his condition is void, and therefore you're left with his original vow of Hareini Nazir. So just to repeat the point, this Tanaic source shows that a condition that partially contradicts the Torah, is con- his entire condition is then considered void, and you're left with the basic vow, Hareini Nazir, and therefore, Reb Shimon would agree with that which it says in the Reisha, that he is a Nazir. We continue in the Gemara, Yodea Ani Shehan Nazir Oser Beyayin, and we saw the Tanakama saying that he uh, is not a Nazir. And then it went on to say that Reb Shimon prohibits. This, you can see, is a quote from the third section of the Mishnah. So, and we pointed this problem out before, while we were reading the Mishnah. What's the problem to repeat ourselves then? You have in the third section of the Mishnah an element of, we'll say, partial Nazirus. He said, I know that a Nazir is in, in, in wine, but I thought that uh, I could get released from the Nazirus because uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle the wine part, the wine aspect of the Nazirus. So, is this not in effect a, uh, say a partial Nazirus acceptance? And we saw earlier in the Mishnah, when you have partial Nazirus acceptance, according to Rabbi Shimon, you're not bound and here in this third section, you are bound. And hence the Gemara asks, Vohamris Reisha Aser Rabbi Shimon Matir. The Gemara answers. And you'll notice we have some markings on the side of the Gemara under the Nosei, Mivne heading, the Nosei, the topic heading, Mivne, the structural note, a house appears. These are Gishos. These are a different approaches. Lahazbir, Liashiv, Shitosom, Shel Chachom, Rabbi Shimon. We want to try to develop consistency in the opinions of the Chachamim throughout the Mishnah, Rabbi Shimon throughout the Mishnah, regarding a we'll call partial Nazirus acceptance. 
But Reisha, in the earlier part of the Mishnah, we saw Tanakama Oyster Abishim and Matir. And Vasefa, in section 3 of the Mishnah, we saw just the opposite Tanakama Matir, Rebishim and Oyster. So, approach 1 is the, we'll call the simplest approach. And he says, Amo Nami, switch around the Seifa as well and say, Hareze Oyster Rebishim and Matir, making section 3 consistent with section 2. A second approach says, don't switch anything around. And note, by the way, that this is a long answer. It'll take you down a number of lines down the top of Omid Bays. So the second approach says, don't switch anything around. Hossam, Reisha, and we're at the top of Omid Bays. In the Reisha case, Kagon, the Nozar Mechada. He accepted Nazirus from one, uh, from let's say one uh, aspect of Nazirus. He was Nazar Mechada. Lerabonon di Amri Gafilu lo Nazar elo meachas mehen have Nazir v'oser. According to the Rabbanon, that when you accept Nazirus, you don't have to itemize all the details of Nazirus. When accepting it, it's enough that you mention one aspect of Nazirus. That is enough to bind you. The Rabbi Shimon Diomar Ad Shiyazer Mikulon, but according to Rabbi Shimon, you're not a Nazir until you accept all the details of Nazirus and specify each point of Nazirus. And accepting one point of Nazirus is not enough to bind you, therefore, Mutter, therefore, you're not bound. Seifa in section 3, the Nodar Mikulu. He actually accepted full Nazirus and he sought a Torah sage to have to be released from one aspect of Nazirus. According to the Rabbonon, that place emphasis on one aspect of Nazirus, that if you abstain from one aspect, you become a full-fledged Nazir, so that the, we'll say, the, the, uh, the subunit aspects of Nazir, according to the Rabbon, even a single one of them, has great significance. Even rescinding one of them through She'elas Chokham, through the uh, intervention of a sage, that has tremendous significance, and it removes the entire Nazirus. The Rabbi Shimon the Omar Aji Yozer Mikulon, according to Rabbi Shimon, who did not place a premium on an individual aspect of Nazirus, and says initial acceptance is not binding until you accept all the details. Ki Mitchell Nami Mehahu, by seeking the rescission of a Chocham of one detail of Nazirus, is not significant. Ah, the Machel Mikulhu. Until you would have all the aspects of Nazirus rescinded through the Chacham. Mishum Hachi Kotoni, and therefore it says in the last part of the Mishnah of Rabbi Shimon, O Ser. So, given these explanations, that the Rasha was talking about an initial partial acceptance, and the Seifa was talking about an initial full acceptance and a only a partial rescission, we come out with a reasonable explanation for the Rabbonon and Rabbi Shimon in each part of the Mishnah. For Iboy Esema, a third approach. Benidre Oinsin Komifugi, the machlokis between the, to the controversy between the Chachomim and Rabbi Shimon concerns a category of vows called Nidre Oinsin. These are Nidorim that are taken under, we'll say, uncontrollable circumstances. Or, we'll say, the circumstances applying to this individual are beyond his control. Uh, what do we mean by that over here? Well, we, we're talking about a case of someone who cannot live without wine. And this Tanaic Machlokes will be, we'll say, clarified or will be paralleled to a later known Amoraic Machlokes. So what we have to do is we'll introduce a 
a Tanaic source from Asechas Nedarim that alludes to this thing called Nidre Oinsim, Oinus being something beyond someone's control, circumstances that are beyond his control, and Rav Asi and Shmuel with regard to this topic, and then point out the parallel Rabbi Rabbonan, the Chachomim, and Rabbi Shimon. Desnan. Arbo Nidorim Hetiru Chachomim. There are four categories of vows, and here I can't translate the expression yet because this is the heart of the upcoming Gemara, but the Hebrew word is Hitiru Chachomim. Obviously, most of you probably understand that the word Hitiru is associated with, with the word Heter. Heter meaning permitted. So that you have four categories of vows that we find are not binding, that the Chachomim declare not binding. But like, how do they get to that point? We have to wait in the Gemara. Wait to see. What are the four categories? Uh, we're not going to dwell on the details. By all means, learn Maseches de Dorim along with Gemara markings and these things will become clearer. The four categories are Nidre Ziruzim, Nidre Havai, Nidre Shgogos, Nidre Oinsin. And we're focusing right now on that fourth category, Nidre Oinsin. The Omer of Yudom Ravasi Arbo Nidorim Halolu Tzrichim She'elu Lachachomim. In order to have mm, vows that are under these categories to be actually rescinded, the vower must consult with a chacham. Ki amriso kamei de Shmuel, Rav Yudah tells us that when he went and told this to Shmuel, Amali, Shmuel's reaction was uh, other than that of Ravasi. He says, Tana katani, the Tana uses the expression hetiru chachamim, in its simplest form would mean the rabbis declared are heter, are permitted, are not binding. If they declared they're not binding at the outset, why would you, why would Rabasi say that you have to consult with a sage to have it rescinded? So we have a machlokis then dealing with nidre oinsim, a neder that is associated with circumstances beyond the individual's control. And here we have someone that accepted Nazirus, but it turns out he can't live without wine. What is the story? <coughs> Rabbonon, the Rabbonon in our Mishnah that we saw are Matir. We're referring to the uh, last section of Mishnah, section 3, where the fellow declared, I can't live without wine. So you're dealing with Nidre Oinsim. And the Chachamim were Matir. So the Chachamim in the Mishnah, Rabbonon Savri Kishmuel. The Rabbonon hold like Shmuel that the Neder doesn't get off the ground. The Nizirus doesn't get off the ground. The, the poor chap, chap can't live without wine. He doesn't become a Nazir. Nothing is nothing. No, no additional uh, release elements are necessary. That's the Rabbonon's approach, like that of Shmuel. For Rabbi Shimon, who declared in the Mishnah Os, Osir that he's bound, Kravasi. He also Kravasi, and that means that as all, as long as he hasn't consulted with a Chacham, as long as he wasn't Shoyol on his nether, as long as he didn't receive formal. Uh, sage rescission of the nether, he is still bound. And that's why Rabbi Shimon said, oh sir, he was talking about that point in time until prior to the vower's cons- consultation with a chacham for formal release. The Mishnah. Hareini Nozir Ve'olai legaleach nozir. This expression ve'olai legaleach nozir is another way of saying, and upon me I am going to bring the sacrifices for my friend, for another fellow who happens to be a nozir, on, and, and I will bring his sacrifices on the day that he takes his haircut. So we have someone in effect committing, committing himself to two things. First of all, he's committing himself to a personal Nazirus. And secondly, he is obligating himself to bring the sacrifices for his friend that happened to be a Nazir. And his friend hears him. 
and says, and he says, Vani, uh, and me, and upon me also to bring sacrifices. So we have two people that are uh, Nazirim. And the second fellow hears what the first fellow said. If they are wise, they will bring the sacrifices for one another. And with, with that, they'll then be uh, exempt from bringing any further korbanas. Ve'im, and, and, and what in, a, in, a, in effect, so Mr. A will bring the sacrifices for Mr. B, and they're, they're with, with, with Mr. B's conclusion of his own Nazirus, so the uh, Mr. A will be taking care of the sacrifices, and Mr. B will be taking care of the sacrifices for Mr. A's personal Nazirus. And as a result, so you see that each person is only buying one set of Nazirus sacrifices. Vimlav, if they're not pikhim, which means if they're not sharp or they're not, not on the ball, then megalchim nazirim achirim. They will uh, end up having to buy sacrifices for other nazirim, uh, in addition to bringing sacrifices for themselves. Before we go further in the Gemara, we glance at the sign under our topic heading, the no say reads, Hamreini Nazir Valai Legalech Nazir. Someone accepts upon himself Nazirus, and he also commits himself to bring Korbanas for, uh, for another Nazir. Vishoma Chavero Vyomar Vani. And the, uh, his friend hears this, and he says just that word, Vani. In the Mishnah, we saw a friend standing by the side and saying more. He said, "Vani v'alai legalech nazir." In the case that the Gemara is asking about, is that the friend says just the word "vani." Ha'im vani koy al kule di bureid rishon. Does the vani when he says "and me too"? Does that go on everything the first guy said? Which would then mean that the listener who said "vani." He'll become a nausea, and he'll bring, he's accepting, he's obligating himself to bring some other nausea sacrifices. Or, by saying Vani, he's only referring to one of the two things that the first individual said. That's going to be the Gemara's question. As far as the response to that, you'll see if you scan ahead in the Gemara, you'll see triangles appear. And under our Mivneh heading, the triangle represents Ma'akaf, an attempt to keep track of the play-by-play of the Gemara. With the point facing up, Nisoyon Lohiach Devani Koy Apalga de Dibure. An attempt to conclude that the Vani is going only on part, only on half of what the first guy said. And the inverted triangle would be a Dechia, a rejection of that attempt. Now the Gemara. shoma chavero v'yomar vani mahu. And as we explained, we're talking about a case where the first guy said hareni nazir v'olai legaleach nazir, and the and the listener says vani mahu. What is the result? Vani akulei dibure mashma. Does the word vani imply? I agree with I I too agree with everything you said or accept everything you said or does Vani go only on half of what the first guy said and if you say that Vani is going only on part only on half of what the first guy said well the first guy said two things is the second fellow who said Vani obligating himself to the first statement of the initial speaker or to the second statement of the initial speaker. The ratio would be acceptance of personal zeros. A sefer this would be the, obli- the self-imposed obligation to bring some other nozir's sacrifices. Well, the Gemara tries to answer. Toshma, 
Vani Volai Lugailech Nozir. This is a quote, of course, from our Mishnah. And the Mishnah went on to say, Im Hoyu Pikrim, Megalchin Ze Eze. If they're wise, they'll bring each other's sacrifices. So now, in the case of the Mishnah, we saw the responder, or the listener, the second guy, saying, Vani Veolai. Midikomar Vani Veolai. Shmamino Vani Apalge Didibure. From the fact that when we saw in the Mishnah, the responder or the, the Chavero saying both expressions in other words Va'ani was not enough to replicate everything the first guy said in addition to saying Va'ani the second fellow said also Ve'olai Legalef Nazir so we, con- we conclude from here that Va'ani goes only on part only on half of what he said only on half of what the first guy said the Gemara continues and says, Amri, in apalge de dibure mashma. I grant you that Vani goes only on part of what he said. Mihu, but there remains the question, Aresha o Asefa. Is the Vani a replication of the, of, of the first part of the initial fellow's comment or the second part of the initial fellow's comment? The Gemara answers, Mino. Mino means from the Mishnah itself that you cited to prove the the first question, you can derive an answer to your second question. From the fact that the second guy, the responder, he said, in other words, he he uh, duplicated what the first guy said. Uh, regarding the acceptance of sacrifices, uh, the acceptance to bring some other nozir sacrifices, and the second guy duplicated that. Shma mino vani al tchilas dibura mashma. It must be then that the vani that the second fellow said is going on the first statement of the initial speaker. Namely, the personal acceptance of the Nazirus, in our case. The Gemara raises a question. Who says that that's the way it is? I will tell you that really the Vani, in, our, in the Mishnah, the Vani of the second guy, Covers everything the first guy said. And if you'll say, well then if Vani replicates everything the first fellow said, my Koomar Vi'olai? What did he mean with the Volai? Bihamilsa. And I am with you in this matter. In other words, even if he didn't say the Olai Legaleach Nozir, the Va'ani would have covered that. So that the Olai Legaleach Nozir is simply a clarification, an elucidation of what his intention was. But he would have been obligated anyway had he not added, had Mr. Two not added the Olai Legaleach Nozir, because Va'ani is Akule Dibura. And Ravuna goes on to prove his point. The Elo Temahachi, the Katani Seifa. If you don't agree with this, well, what about that which it says in a in an upcoming Mishnah Daf Yud Beis Amid Beis, where the Mishnah features the following: Harei Olai Legaleach Chatsi Nozir, the Shoma Chavero Viomar, Vani Olai Legaleach Chatsi Nozir. Hasami Ika Tartin Mili are in in that case the 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 opening phrase Hare Alai Legalea Chatsi Nozir are there two matters there? Are there two things there? There aren't two things there. There isn't any we'll say initial acceptance of Nazirus. 
All there is, is the person obligating himself to bring half the sacrifices of a Nazir. Elamai Omar, in that case, in the Seifa, when he, when the responder said, Vani Olai Legalea Chatsi Nazir. Notice, he used the word Vani, and he added Olai Legalea Chatsi Nazir. What was he saying? Olai Bahamilsa, meaning I'm, I'm, it's upon me uh, with you in this matter. In other words, it's simply a clarification. And that in the Seifa, it's very clear that Va'ani would have been enough. Because as we just said, there aren't two things there that we have to debate what's it going on. There's only one statement made by the initial speaker, and the responder could have simply said Va'ani, that he adds, Olai Legalech is what, we, as what the Gemara says, Olai Baha Mil. So it's really a, just a mere clarification, but not a necessary clause. Hachonami in the ratio as well. Ki ko'omar Olai Baha Mil. So when he said, Olai Legalech Nazir, it was simply a clarification. I am, I am with you in this matter, but in truth, Va'ani would have been a kule dibure. It would have covered everything. So, the end of this, you see, Rav Huna, Braid, Rav Yushua is making his point. And if you look at our markings, we have dashed, underlined, uh, Rav Huna's comment, Vani Akule Debura. And this is a challenge to the previous dash, underlined, where we had, writ- where we had noted, Shmami no Vani Apalgi de Debura. Omar Le Rava. So now Rava responds to Rav Huna, Braid, Rav Shua's question. Actually, uh, Rav Huna had, um, had, had pointed this out to Rava. Now Rava responds. Hachi hashta. How can you, we'll say, compare the, the seifa to the ratio? Or, or how can you prove the understanding of our Mishnah from Dafyud Beis on the base of the Mishnah over there? E amers bishlema ratio tzricha. Things will make more sense if you say that in our Mishnah, here on Yun Allah from Beis, that the V'olai, the Galeach Nosir, is actually an essential expression, without which the speaker, when he would have said, the responder, when he would have said just Vani, he would have been obligating himself only to one aspect of the two points made by the first speaker. So therefore, the additional vi'olai is necessary. Seifa lo tzricha, the Mishnah later, on the Afyud Beis Amid Beis, there, in fact, the olai is not necessary. So we have olai, legaleach nazir, in our Mishnah is being necessary, and the Olai Legalea Chatsi Nazir in the next mission is not really necessary. There weren't, in fact, two points to respond to anyway. There's a legitimate Mishnah style. Tony Seifa de Lot Tzricha, Mishum Reisha de Tzricha. This happens from time to time that Mishnayas, it's true that they're separated page wise, but just you have to realize it's one, we'll say, in your mind's eye, it's one long Mishnah. The Seifa just appears on Daf Yud Beis Amid Beis. So, the end of the Mishnah contains something that's not really necessary because it's coming on the heels of the Reisha where it really was necessary. Just like, once again, this is an acceptable Tanaic style where if, if at one point of the Mishnah the information was necessary, so in a, in, a, in, a, in a second case it might teach using the same terminology even though there in the later case it's not necessary. Eloi Amris, but if you're going to go like Rav Huna Brave Yeshua suggested, that Reisha Lotzricha. If you're going to go like Rav Huna Brave Yeshua, that the Viani really covers everything, and that the continued expression Violai Legalech Nazi was really unnecessary. So we have our Mishnah with the Violai Legalech being unnecessary. So Reisha Lotzricha. And then the Seifa is certainly not necessary. Seifa Lotzricha. What, what do we then have? We have an entire Mishnah with, with the unessential information in it. Tani Reisha de Lotzricha, but Tani Seifa de Lotzricha. 
what the, is the Mishnah is trying to accumulate unnecessary words? The ratio would have something that's not necessary and the Sefer also something that's not necessary. Therefore, Rava's point is that the Va'ani is really a palga de dibure. It only covers half of what the initial speaker had mentioned. If the, if, if the initial speaker mentioned two points and the responder says, Va'ani, it really covers only half. And as far as the Seifa is concerned, that the Va'alai Legayach Nozir there is really, in fact, unessential. With that, we conclude our Shi'or for today.